Hello, I've already done a video on Delta T, and this is a, a bit of a supplement to that one, uh, just to discuss a few ideas. I'm going to use this radio as a prop. I'm also going to look at um, the heating simulator, which is on my website, and also look at some heatpumpmonitor.org graphs, uh, some real life data. Now, firstly, what am I talking about? What is the Delta T? It's the difference in temperature between two things, and it can be used in different ways. It's used to rate the output of a radiator. So typically, if we have a, a, a radiator rated with a delta T of 50, that means if the radiator is in a room of 20 degrees, then the radiator would be 70 degrees, it would give out a certain output. Now, I'm not talking about that delta T, I'm talking about the one to do with liquids flowing in and out of a heat pump or in and out of a radiator circuit. So as water runs through a, a boiler or a heat pump, it will emerge warmer than it went in. And that's the temperature difference we're talking about, the delta T, the flow and return temperatures. Those are sort of outdated terms. You could say the water inlet and the water outlet of a heater or a heat pump or inlet and outlet of a radiator network. So firstly, let's bring in the radio. I, I was trying to think of something that is affected by more than one different thing. And I'm considering here the, the sound level, the loudness of the radio. And of course, the obvious thing that affects it is the volume control. And if I turn it up, and down I can get the level I want but another thing that affects the sound level that I'm hearing here is the distance it is away from me obviously the further, the further away it is the quieter it is and I could of course turn it up quite loud and put it outside the room and it would sound very similar to if I turned it down and kept it uh, close so this is a little similar to the Delta T because there's more than one thing that affects it. One is the heat quantity in kilowatts and the other is the flow rate of water going through this, the system. And I think it's all too easy to just consider one of them, which is the heat quantity. In other words, to, to consider that if the Delta T isn't big enough, then there's not enough heat transfer, for example. But of course, there's also the flow rate to consider, and that's what we're looking at now. And let's have a look at the simulator. So here we are. So this can be, um, you can find this on my website and go to full screen view, which is this one. The idea of it is just to think things through as an educational tool. And I'll just explain what it is. It's a, a normal panel radiator, uh, with water flowing through it and an electric heater here. I chose not to have a heat pump just to keep it simple. It could be a boiler or any heater. So the electric heater is probably the most simple. And in this case, we've got 1.7 kilowatts of um, electrical power going into it. This can be varied on the left. We'll come to that in a minute. So all of this heat will be transferred to this water, which is flowing through. Here we've got a circulation pump, pumping it through the radiator. Now, after a little bit of time, this will find a sort of steady state. And the 1.7 kilowatts of electrical power is converted to 1.7 kilowatts of heat here. And that must be dissipated from the radiator. So we must be emitting 1.7 kilowatts, and it will sort of find its own temperature. I've also got the temperature here of the water returning here at 48.2 and coming out at 53 degrees. And the difference between these two is, is this delta T, 4.9, call it five degrees. So we've got a five degrees difference, rising temperatures goes through. That is the delta T. And what we can do on the left, we can change various things. We can change the quantity of heat. You can see the radiator gets hotter. We can change the flow rate um, to very slow or very high. You can notice the temperature of the radiator doesn't change. 
because the power input doesn't change. We can also change the room temperature. And all this does is shifts all of the temperatures up and down accordingly. That's all that does. We can change the radiator size if we want. We can also change the type. But for this sort of comparison, we don't need to do any of that. We can also use Fahrenheit if that's the units we're conversant with. And we can, if we want, um, look at the difference if we put glycol into the, into the system. So let's just put it back to the default settings and see what happens when we play with it. Notice the delta T that isn't changeable. The delta T and the room and the sorry, the radiator temperature are a sort of net result of things changing here. We can change the power going into that heater. And if we if we just look at what effect that has, the moment the delta T is 4.95 degrees and the radiator is just over 50. We double that. Now the radiator has gone up in temperature after it's reached its steady state. We've got 3.4 kilowatts of electrical input here, and we've got 3.4 kilowatts of heat output. Personally, I don't like using power here. I tend to use heat output. That's my personal choice. So we know now the delta T has risen, has doubled. It's 10, nearly 10 degrees. So the water running through here, there's more energy transferred to the water. So we would expect it to rise more than it was before. So that makes sense. Put it back where it was. Now let's just see what happens with the flow rate. We're back with a delta T of five. We double the flow rate. What would we expect? Water's going through faster and the power input is the same as, as when we started. So now we would expect it not to rise so much. And indeed the delta T has gone down. It's 2.4 is about half what it was. So that all sort of makes sense. So the point I want to make put across is the, the, the sort of idea that the delta T has an effect on the heat output. Well, it may do, but it may not. And I occasionally hear the, the idea that the water is going too fast and it can't transfer heat because it's going too fast. Well, I can't think of a case where that would be true. If, for example, we turn this up very high, we've got the same quantity of heat, we've got a very high flow rate, and we've got a delta T of 1.2. So there's not much difference between the inlet and outlet. I think the important thing to consider or to concentrate on is this temperature, because this temperature is really dictating the heat output. That radiator, if it's at 50, about 50 degrees, has to be emitting 1.7 kilowatts. The only way it wouldn't do that is if we put a duvet over it or something, covered it. It must do that. We could have an um, infrared camera and look at that radiator and tell fairly accurately how much heat is coming off. doesn't matter what the delta T is or the flow rate is. It's all down to the surface temperature of the radiator. Of course, one of the problems with this would be noise, really and pump energy. There's no need to circulate at such a high rate. I think the simulator is a great learning tool, but it can be a little bit tedious with the sliders. So you can also use these calculators on my website, and there's three of them at the bottom for radiators. So you can put in various variables you can put in and get results. A warning that important just to double check things. I never um, thought of this as a design tool, just as an educational tool, really. So now let's look at some real live graphs. So this is from heatpumpmonitor.org. I'm not actually sure what heat pump it is, but that doesn't matter. I'm just going to show the, uh, well, let me tell you what it's all about. This is a, so a real time graph. So its time period is about an hour from here to here. 
And if we mouse over, we can tell things. This is on the 11th of June. And the let's tell you what the plot is about. The bottom right here, this gray area, is the input power. This area here is the heat output measured with a heat meter. And then we've got three temperature plots. This is the outlet from the heat pump, the flow temperature. This is the return temperature back to the heat pump. And this is the outside temperature here. So it's a reasonably warm day, 13 degrees. So we would expect high efficiency. And also the flow temperature is only getting to 35, which is a really good efficient temperature range to work in. Now, the difference in these two temperatures, the flow and return, is the delta T. So let's look at how that changes. Now, the total energy used for the input power and the heat output, we can sort of gauge roughly how the ratio of one to the other is actually displayed here, which is the COP in this window, which is really this area divided by this gray area here. And if, for example, we look at that point there, the power input is just input is just over a kilowatt. Heat output is 6.3. So the ratio there is probably about COP of, of 6. It probably gets a bit worse in other places. And that's why the average is 5.6. So let's just look at the delta T. And why don't we choose this point here? So the Heat output here is 6.3 kilowatts, near enough. The flow temperature reaches, get it on that line, 35.6, let's call it 36 degrees. Return temperature, 30 degrees, that's nice round numbers. So we've got a delta T of 6 and a heat output of 6.3. Now let's look at this low point here. So the heat output is around three kilowatts. And the flow temperature is 34.7, 34.7. Turn temperature at that point is 31.8. So pretty well three degrees delta T. So these are all very nice round numbers. We have roughly got, to be honest, we've got about six kilowatts here with a delta T of six. And we've got three kilowatts here with a delta T of about three. Now we know from that the flow rate, the flow rate is probably constant. And the nice thing about these graphs is you can look at extra things. Well, we can actually look at the um, average heat output and the average power input consumption. And the ratio of these are that COP there. We can add the flow rate, and there we are, a very level output flow rate, which is what we expect, because the heat output and the delta T are both going together in the same proportion. It's always interesting just to see what happens here. So uh, the, the flow rate goes up, increases. We can see the flow and return temperatures go down. Well, obviously, at that point, an extra zone, an extra radiator has come on, which has made the flow rate increase. Some colder water has gone in. And then what's happened is, after a little bit of time, the compressor has revved up a little bit. And up comes the heat output. And then as it levels off, as this temperature rises, it starts to back off again. OK, so that's an example of a system almost certainly with a fixed speed circulation pump now let's look at another one which has a circulation pump that modulates so here we are a very similar type of graph and we can see this period where the compressor revs up speeds up i should say for this initial part and then drops down and this is it reaching its maximum, which is 5.7 kilowatts. And then as this temperature rises, the input drops down, the output drops down. Now, look, 
from the last graph, we could see that the delta T, as it dropped down, got narrower and narrower. But without even doing the looking at the data, we can tell that these lines are fairly parallel. I don't know why it's doing this modulation. Not necessarily a problem. I don't know why it's doing it, though. So now if we look at the circulation, the flow rate, we don't expect it to be linear or level, and it's not, because as it starts up, it goes to probably maximum, I don't know, 20 litres a minute. And then at this point here, it's decided it's going to turn down a little bit. And then it, and then it goes down in different steps, modulates around a little bit. So if you were looking at the delta T, you wouldn't glean anything about the heat output, the heat output's changing, but the circulation pump is actually responding to that heat output. It's trying to keep the delta T to probably five degrees, is it five degrees? Let's have a look. And only one point, 28.7. And 31.3. So I think that's delta T of 2.6, which is quite close. But then because the flow temperature is 30, it's not surprising we have quite a close, quite a low delta T, which is good. So back to the simulator briefly, there's a couple of points I wanted to make. One is that there's a little bit of distortion with this model when the delta T gets wide because it's assuming a fairly even drop in temperature across here because the difference in temperature between here in the room and here in the room is, is similar. But of course, if the delta T gets too large, and let's simulate that for example, we drop the flow rate right down, we've now got quite a a warm area up here, about 58 degrees and about 42 degrees down here. So it's considerably warmer here. So there's more heat given off for this part of the radiator or the top part of the radiator. That gives a bit of a distortion, but it's not very much really. But just be mindful that, that this works well with fairly close delta T. And the other thing I wanted to say is often your radiator system is actually being fed with a fairly fixed temperature. So let's just show you what I mean. Let's say that the flow rate from the system, from a buffer tank or whatever, is 50 degrees. So if we can try and simulate that, let's start with a single fin. So we've got a single fin radiator, 1.2 square meters. And we're going to feed it with 50 degree flow temperature. So we can look at this flow temperature and drop this down. Now our delta T is a little bit low there, so let's flow, let's slow the flow down. You get back to about five degrees. We now need to then just trim this a little bit. So now we've got a situation where this radiator is being fed 50 degrees. Delta T is about five, and it's giving off 0.85 kilowatts of heat. Now let's swap it for a double finned radiator. Immediately the the temperature comes down because we're still on this model trying to give off 8.5 kilowatts. So now let's try and bring up the flow temperature so that the radiator, so the flow temperature, sorry, is 50 degrees, which is there. So now we, we've got a flow temperature going in. We're giving off 1.4 kilowatts. But we noted that the delta T is, is greater because we are emitting more heat. So we need a bit more water flow. So let's try and get that back to delta T of five, which we've got now here. Now we need to just tweak this a little bit, 1.5 kilowatts. So now we're still being fed the same temperature water. The radiator is hotter. We're getting 1.5 kilowatts instead of 0.85. Again, this, um, you could try this again, put these numbers into the calculator so you don't have to slide around with these. Just giving you an example of other things you can do with this.